What's going on guys, it's your boy Serrano, welcome back to the channel, do me a favor, if you're new to the crew, hit both the like and the subscribe button on your way in, also hit the bell icon for more videos just like this so you can get subscribed and notified, but if you're already a part of the crew, This first tip, we're going to be showing you how you can actually activate the app draw on this device. So right now you can see all I have to do is swipe up, but when you first get the device, it's not like that. So you basically have to go to the home settings by long holding the screen. And then at the bottom, you're going to see launcher uh, option right here. You want to actually hit default, but you can see it's at home screen right here. And when you hit home screen, you will actually just get all your icons on the main screen so you won't have that app draw. So I just wanted to show you that if you long hold the screen and then go to the home settings and then just click launcher style default, which it actually is set at, you can change in between the app draw and not have the app draw. Now my second favorite feature about this phone is the smart key, right? So what you wanna do is go into the settings option and then just click this key right here. What I do have is my camera as the single click uh, we also do have a double click the power button to get the camera so i can get rid of that one and just change it to maybe something like that i would use more often maybe maybe let's see camera what what, what do you use every single day without even thinking about it maybe like the maps or something like that so i would probably just use that so you can see i have the double click right here for my camera on the power button so i saved the button right here on this side for the navigation key so now when i click the single button for the navigation key i'm getting my google assistant right so i mean my i'm getting my maps application and then when i go back to that option if i double click i could get to my flashlight right so it's going to give me my flashlight when i double click that let me just show you one two one two and then when i click long hold i could actually get to the google assistant but you can change any three one of these buttons to the one you so desire. So let me just long hold this one. When is the NBA Finals? The Suns will face the Bucks on Tuesday at 9 p.m. So I definitely like using that smart key option, but there's another way to actually take a screenshot with this device and it's with the navigation shades. So you can see right here, with the navigation shade at the top, if you just swipe over, we are getting that screenshot button that you could just hit. And what it does is give you lasso, rectangle, or the long screenshot, which is a scroll. So it basically scrolls down the page and then when you hit the button, it'll stop. So if you just wanted to get your traditional screenshot, let's say you were browsing social media or something like that and you just go onto Facebook or anything like that. When it finally loads, Let's just say you want to go ahead, take a screenshot. And I did keep the screen protector on here. It doesn't feel weird out of the box. I know it. Uh, some screen protectors do feel weird, but let's just say I see something that's pretty cool. Maybe this fit, I want to maybe admi I admire that and I want to see it again. So what I would do is hit this button. Well, actually what I would do is this hit the power button and the volume rocker down at the exact same time. And you get the screenshot right there you get edit and you get share so i definitely think that's pretty cool now another thing that you could do is actually go into the split screen window by just long holding up right here and then you're going to see another way to actually access the screenshot just hit that button right there and you will get it in the most recent apps menu at so i just wanted to show you that but if you just long hold up and then hit this icon at the top for like two seconds you'll access the split screen window and this is the window where you can actually do two things at once so if you did want to watch videos while scrolling social media it definitely does give you that option and you could use it in the vertical or landscape or portrait mode so i just wanted to kind of show you that you do have that option so i think i think that's pretty cool as well now a quick thing to do that you want to do is if you want to access your have people access your information while you're in emergency long hold the screen and then you're gonna see emergency. So what you wanna do is hit that button and then hit emergency information, hit that one more time and then hit edit. And then this is where you're gonna enter your name, add your information and add your contact information as well. Now, another thing you can do is remove the Google feed right here. If you don't like that Google feed, 
just simply long hold the screen one more time, go to home settings, and then you can actually just get rid of the app right there just by hitting that button. So when you scroll over to the left right now, you won't see an option to get there anymore. Now, another thing that you wanna do is since we are on Android 11, we do get those chat bubbles, right? So what you wanna do is go into navigation on this device, apps and navigation. And then when you're gonna see that we do have a list of options here, but we also do have notifications right here. So what you wanna do is hit bubbles and then you can see we can actually add allow chat bubbles by hitting this option right here. And what that will do is turn the chat into a bubble and you could always get to it. You can open or close as many as you do so desire, but those will be floating icons that you can chat with on your screen. Now, if you wanna silent notifications on your home screen so that no one sees when they're coming up, what you have to do is click this option under notifications, which is in apps and notifications so just hit notifications and then go right here where you're going to see the options right here so you're going to see notifications on lock screen so just hit that and then you can don't show any notifications at all or hide silent notifications and you could just hit that option and it will actually hide silent conversations and notifications as well and while we're in notifications what i did want to touch on is that this option right here called suggested action and replies is actually pretty cool. So when you get a, uh, a, a message, there will be some text above will say like, if someone says, hi, how are you doing? There'll be a quick response. And it'll just say, what's up? Or how are you doing? Or what's going on? As a quick response, you could just hit that as well. But they also do have an option where you can change, you know, the, 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 the default notification sound. And then they do also have this add your own notification sound. So if you download a sound to your phone, it's an MP3 or a WAV file, you can find it inside of your settings here and then you can add the song or notification sound that you, you know, you did so desire. But these are all the, you know, the sounds that do actually come with the device. Now, if you wanted a really quick way to get to the Google Assistant, you can just hit this option right here on the home screen or you could swipe up from the corner and get the Google Assistant right here. So what's the weather right now? It's 76 and cloudy. Tonight, the forecast is around 72 degrees. Now, another thing hidden inside the features of this device is inside of the Smart Assistant. So you're gonna get a lot of tools inside here. You're gonna be able to change your gestures to the iPhone style navigations where you can just swipe across to go back, swipe up to go home. You also do get the two button navigation or the three button navigation on here as well. You also do get this option, which is the smart Summita sensory. So basically you can have three fingers to get into your camera. You can have two fingers to adjust the volume, or you could do three fingers on the screen, on the lock screen. And you, you can see right here, uh, double click on any home screen, non-supported gesture, and it will lock the screen. So let's just see if that'll work. Let's try that, double click. All right, let's try something else here. Oh, so just keep in mind that there is a catch with this thing. It will only work with the traditional touchscreen buttons or three home touch buttons. So you won't be able to use that for the navigation screen, but you can do a quick emergency contact call right here. You can add emergency rescue. You can turn that on or off. You could also edit the message that you want to be sent out. And you could also put the interval of how many times you want the message to be sent out. And then it will go to all of the contacts that you so do so choose when you long press these two buttons. So I just want to show you the buttons one more time. It's going to be the power button and the, the, the volume up and down rocker when you actually activate that. Now, another really cool feature that's built right in is the screen recording option. But one thing you wanna know is that you do have a time where you can record your voice. So what you wanna do is long press it so you can get these additional options, right? So you can see it will record your voice with the microphone on deck or it will just record that from the audio equipment that you're using. But you can see it will show the touches if you so desire or not. And I think those features are really important as well. Now, another thing that this device does 
include is that parental controls and the option where you can control your digital well-being. So it will have an option, right? If you're the type of person who uses your phone too much, right? It's going to have this option where it will allow you to manage your data. You can actually, you know, set up, you know, options here where you can put reduce options here for do not disturb. And you could you could do that for people, apps, alarms. You could schedule different things here. You can also put the duration of how, how long you want it to be. And then you can also have no notifications on your display for some time or another. So I think that's pretty cool. So it'll say no sound from notifications or no visuals or sounds from notifications or custom. And then when you go into custom, you can actually set it as you so desire. So I think that's pretty cool that if you don't want to be disturbed, you go into the digital well-being and you could schedule these little things where it will hide some of the activate the some of the calls, the messages, the conversations that you're getting. You could definitely hide those. You could also put some apps in here and it'll hide those apps, those notifications as well. And what I did notice is to get a louder sounding speaker, you can combine the audio channels right here. So I would just combine those so it would have sound just a pitch louder when you're listening to the audio quality. Now, another feature that I like on here is inside of security. And this is going to be the smart lock feature, right? So you want to go to smart lock, then you want to enter your pin, right? So you can get access to this feature, which would basically enable the smart on body detection. So whenever you have your device on you, it's going to unlock automatically if, as long as you're in motion or you have the phone in your hand, it will unlock without you putting in your password, pattern, fingerprint, or face ID. Now, another thing that I thought was pretty cool is the option where when you unlock your face, and I'm gonna show you just a second after I enter my pin, but with the face ID, there is an option where it requires your eyes to actually be open. Right here, you can see eyes to be open, and you can also skip the swipe feature and go directly to the unlock screen. So I definitely like the fact that they do that. You have those options there. So if you just want to unlock the phone with your face, you can see that you can have it require you to swipe. But let's say you didn't want it to do that. And let me just put my pin in one more time because it's going to re require me anytime think something changes on there, it's going to require you to do a so let's just see if it asked me to do a swipe this time. So this time it didn't require me to do a swipe this time, which is actually pretty cool. And while we're in security, another thing that you want to do is always click on this option which says Google Play System Update because that's what's going to push out updates now on Android 11 so you can always be updated with the Google Play System Update for your apps. And it is June 1st security system update which is actually the most recent update that it has right now. Now another time I noticed that a lot of people have found that some of the apps that they are having on their phone sometimes they get a notification when they don't want to. So what you can do is just go to apps and notifications Find the app that you're getting notifications on and see you could you could uh, click all so it'll let you see from the whole entire list. So you could see all right here or you could see most recent and then whatever the app is, you can just go click on the app and it gives you all of the notifications here. So you could choose between what you don't want to be alerted on. You could click all notifications or you could just click emergency alerts, news, contacts and followers recommended from Twitter and things of that nature. Now, another thing I like to do is go into privacy and I like to remove all of the ads, right? And you want to, you want to opt out of personalized ads by hitting, hitting that button. And when you also go into, you know, you know, it's going to give you activity controls. You definitely, and tailor it just a little bit more and on, you could actually deactivate the ads directly on there. So you have to do both. So I just wanted to let you guys know and throw that out there. Now, another thing that I find really cool is the, in the system where you can change the user because I think that's pretty cool because whenever you want to change the user, you can see right here, set, lock, multiple users. So you can add different users right here and you can add a new user, add a guest, or you can keep it as you, but you can add it from the lock screen as well. And I just find that really cool. Let's say you want to hand your phone off to a kid or like a girlfriend and you don't trust them with your information or some of the, the things in your phone, you can definitely add them on here as a guest or as a new user. Now, in order to update this phone, we did get an update which came in two days ago, which was for the June security software update. And how we check that is just by going into security. You can see 
that we do have the March one actually on here. We do have the March one on here. And then the June 1st place uh, update, but to actually update the security system software, go to system. And then what you wanna do is click the option where it says system update right here. But then there's also gonna be one in about phone, which is right here at the top. And you actually have to get into there to get your Android 11 and security patches there. So there's three different ways. There's one in the security, there's one in about phone, and there's one in the system, which is like right here as well. So I just kind of want to throw that up. Now, this is really important to keep your device with optimal battery health, and you want to power it on and off every day at least. So you could choose a time where the device will power off and on every single day. You could power it on and power it back off, but you have to schedule the time to do so. So I just kind of want to let you guys know that if you do do that, what it's going to do is provide optimal battery health for your phone in the long term. Now, something else that's pretty cool is app pinning inside of security. So all you have to do is go to security, scroll all the way down to the very bottom after you click more options and then just go to app pinning. And what you want to do is turn that on because if you hand your phone off to like a family member or a kid or something like that, and let's say you want to show somebody a picture. Now this is really clutch because let's say you just want to show somebody one picture and you don't want them to scroll through your entire you know photo album. All you would have to do is just go to that picture right here and then all you have to do is swipe up right here and then you could actually long hold and then pin the app. So now this is actually pinned, it's locked there. So if they try to, you know, you could pin the app, but you they, they can actually, you know, they could scroll around, but they won't be able to leave the app is what I'm trying to say. So they'll be able to get into other pictures and things of that nature. But until they, they ask you for your pattern password or pin, which is gonna be protected by your face or your, your fingerprint, and um, they'll need that access from you in order to get back in, which I definitely think is pretty cool. Now, something someone pointed out to me was how do you remove Amber Alerts? So the main way to remove Amber Alerts is just type here in the keyboard option, Amber Alerts, and then just click that first icon and then click the first icon at the very top right there. But if you also wanna just remove one of the options right here for you know, vibration or, you know, the thing where it keeps reminding you, you could put just once and everything like that. You could also check the history of alerts that you got here. But if you just want the extreme threats, severe threats or amber alerts for children, abductions and emergency bulletins or just customize it, you can do so. Now, another thing that you would need to do to organize your storage on your device is click storage manager. Just hit that. And now your phone is gonna be managed by the storage manager. Just go to settings, go to storage, and then turn on storage manager. Storage manager, remove photos and videos that are over nine the days old. You could turn it to 60, you could also turn it to 30 as well, but it will take care of that for you automatically. Another thing that you wanna do is go into this device and you wanna turn on the sounds, right? Whenever you hit a button, you want to hear that so you want to hit, turn on the touch sounds you also want to go into sound enhancement and turn on the best loudness so you can get a little bit more of a louder speaker on there but in addition to that you also want to go into battery and you want to turn on battery percentage that way you can see how much battery is left without having to scroll down on the window right here at the top notification panel to see how much battery is left. But another thing that Umidigi did was they did optimize the battery in here. So we do have battery saver. We also do have battery manager. And you know, we if you click this option right here for battery usage, you can see the battery usage for the device in detail and everything like that. So I definitely like how the fact that they have the battery saver and the battery manager for better optimization. Now, this device also also has voice over LTE and Wi-Fi voice over Wi-Fi over LTE. I mean, Wi-Fi calling. So I don't think I like it's cool, but it's kind of annoying is the fact that it will auto connect to the Wi-Fi a lot of the times. So you actually have to go into the Wi-Fi preferences and turn that off where it says turn on Wi-Fi automatically because otherwise you'll automatically get connected to the Wi-Fi as well. And then you could go right here into the mobile settings and that's where you'll get 
the VoiceOver LTE Void 4G optimized voice control. And then when you go down in here, you'll have the option for your video calling and your Wi-Fi calling as well. We also do have data saver at the top and that's gonna actually prevent background information from being used on this device without your discretion, battery saver and data saver. So I definitely think that's pretty cool that they do also offer the battery saver and the data saver. If you don't see it on there, you could just click the pen icon and you could just drag it up from the hidden option there. It's gonna be hidden, so you have to drag it up from the bottom and then it's going to say it's going to help reduce data, prevent apps from sending and receiving background information. And you can actually set that whenever you suit so desire. Another thing that you could do while you have your earbuds connected to your smart device is you can actually switch to your Bluetooth speaker real quick, right? So they give you this option where you have your control center, you have your right here, the option of the buds that you're listening to. So we could just put these in. Right, and we have, we're listening to music right now. So let me just turn that on. And let's just say we're just listening to music right now. And I wanna hear something from my speaker, my Bluetooth speaker. So I'm gonna wait for this app to open. All right guys, so I'm just listening to music right now with these earbuds. And if I just click this option right here, it's gonna let me go right back to my phone speaker right here or any other Bluetooth headset that I have. So I definitely think that's actually pretty cool. Now, another feature that I really feel is solid on this device is the screen recording feature. And this is good for Facebook or something like that, right? You're only gonna be able to see something once on Facebook. Um, so what you wanna do is basically just go right here, go into screen recording, click the, the screen recording option, and then just hit start. And basically it's gonna start recording the video right now. So you. You're going to hear the notification sound that it is starting to record and whatever you put the screen on, it's going to record it. So, right, it will have that option to record the screen. It's going to save everything that you did so desire to save on there. Then when you're done with the screenshot, you could just hit stop, right? Just hit the stop button and then the video is going to be right here inside of your photo gallery it's, it's going to be right here inside of the photo gallery and then you could just re-watch the video as many times as you do so desire and we also have an option up here called screencast now what is screencast well basically if you have a smart tv or something like that with wi-fi connected to it just hit the screencast option you have to be connected to the wi-fi and you also would have to turn that on then you would have to hit screencast right after you do that the, the phone will automatically ask you whether you want to compare it to your your smart devices such as your tv in my case it would ask me if i want to pair it to my 32 inch tcl um the, uh, tv which is a smart tv which will actually cast whatever's on my phone to my smart tv which is pretty cool and just another really cool feature that's been on android for a long time but it's kind of hidden in this device unless you scroll through the features for a while on this device you will be able to see that in display we do have the mirror vision option but we'll let you customize the 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 screen right you could do it at vivid you could do it at standard you could do it at you know the user's discretion and in this case you would be able to conduct different areas on the screen where it would have different lighting and you could also conduct the contrast saturation picture brightness as well as other features of the screen. And it's gonna give you some advanced options here, such as, you know, video dynamic contrast, blue light defender, and color temperature, and also the sharpness as well. But if you didn't wanna go through all of the hassle, you could just choose between the two that they have to offer, standard or vivid, which I think is pretty cool as well. Now, I don't normally use adaptive brightness in the display settings because sometimes when I'm gaming, the device will dim while I'm gaming and then that can be annoying when I'm playing a game. But if you did, we're just using your phone regularly and in any environment like outside or outdoors, it would automatically adjust to its fullest capacity automatically so you wouldn't have to do the slider. And then when you got indoors, it would automatically dim as well. So I just think that's pretty cool for people who don't wanna to go to the hassle of always changing their display settings. And of course, we do have the screen timeout feature, which you can set when you want the phone to lock, but 
just in case you wanted to be on, let's say you were reading an article or reading Google Kindle or reading some uh, something and you want to have the device turned on for a very long time without it cutting off, you can actually activate it to up to 30 minutes as well. And tucked away at the very bottom of the display settings, we actually do have lift to wake, right? We do have that lift to wake feature. So when you lift the device up, like just like this, it will automatically turn on every single time and it will unlock every single time. So I just think that's pretty cool for the convenience option as well. And of course we do have a few more features on here. So I definitely appreciate you for being here this late in the video. If you made it this far, put down in the comment section, A11 beyond dreams right now. So I know it's real, but we're going to be talking about the next feature right here, which is also going to be your lock screen option. And here you're gonna be able to add users, you're gonna be able to skip lock screen directly, and you're also going to be able to show the lock screen option, which will basically, when you hit that, let me just show you. It'll show you the lockdown option right here. And what that will do is it's disable your fingerprint. You can't now, you can't enter your fingerprint or your pattern. You can enter your pattern, but you can't enter your face ID. So the person who is trying to get into your device would have to know that before getting into it. So I definitely think that's pretty cool as well. And of course, we can add our own personalized lock screen message. And I, like I always, I like to put my my name there because a lot of the times um, I just like to see that on the main screen as well. So if you just unlock the phone, you can see right there, you, you can have your name right there. You can see it's right there. And with the on-body detection, you can see that the phone is unlocking without a facial recognition or fingerprint every single time for me here. Now, another thing that I found really cool on this device is that you can actually receive tech messages from other devices. So if you just hit the three dots at the right hand corner and then click device pairing, you can see where it says send and receive messages on your device. So all you'd have to do is get the QR scanner ready, then first pair your device with your phone by scanning the QR under the the website htm https um hyphen forward slash forward slash messages dot google dot com slash web which i think is pretty cool now if you don't want people to read your messages that you're sending out you can hit the three dots here as well and go into settings and what you have to do is go into chat features right at the very top you're going to see chat features here what you want to do is hit that and then what you want to do it will you'll have to enable all three of the settings chat features, send and receive receipts and show typing indicators so that the person who's receiving the message won't be able to see that. And what you also wanna do is go into the settings option and go into settings one more time. And then when you see spam protection down at the bottom, just hit that and just make sure you have spam detect protection enabled. So you're not getting constantly ha um, annoyed by these people who are sending those spam messages to you every day. And also in that settings feature is the option to do suggestions in chat. So you can activate assistant suggestions for the weather and things like that. So if you're in the Google Assistant, it will recommend things for you to say to it. It also will give you smart replies, quick responses that you can use. Good morning, thanks, smiley faces, and also suggested actions like setting up an event or you know, attaching a recent photo or starting a video call or even sharing your location with someone as well. Now, it's really easy to block someone if you're trying to block a text message. All you would have to do is long hold it right here and then you're going to see an icon right here at the top right corner. And then what you want to do is just hit that right hand corner right there and it will block that phone number. And then again, if you're in phone calls, all you have to do is long press the most recent phone number you were talking with and then you will see that block and spam report option here as well for phone calls and another really cool thing is that you can go into visual voicemail on this device it says visual voicemail isn't working so you would have to set that up when you do have the time but this device does also support the visual voicemail feature. And so essentially what that means is that the phone will read your voicemail out loud with you at not with, you don't have to actually put your ear to the phone. You could read the voicemail or just listen to it on speakerphone without having to dial in. And of course, maybe you wanna at this time start a group message, which is really easy. So all you would have to do is go to a start a, a message right here at the bottom 
And then you could enter in as many contacts from your list that you do have at the top. So you, what you wanna do is click a few different options here. You wanna click that option here. Then you wanna go back to the add option and then you'll be able to click another option here. And then let's say you wanna click more people in there. You can go down your list of contacts and just add as many people as you so desire. And then just go ahead and click next. And then you can set up the group name for the group message. And then you could just go ahead and type those direct people directly. So then you'll have like your own group chat and everything like that. And another thing you can do is set up the screen to saver. By the way, we're almost finished with the video. So I appreciate you for being here. We also have the clock. You could set up a photo or a particular color, right? It'll give you different colors and it'll say while charging, while docked, while charging or docked or whatever you so believe, but you will get those, those cool colors on there while the screen is on timeout or charging or anything like that. And so the last feature that I definitely think is pretty cool that I would probably do is the bedtime mode. This one I have set to 11. So whenever I hit that, whenever it's automatically set up, so it will automatically turn the phone to black and white. So when I'm looking at the phone, I know I'm not really gonna be using my phone too much at nighttime. So I don't really wanna see those colors, especially when I wake up at night. I don't wanna see any bright colors. Those black and whites will be perfect when you're waking up out of your sleep. It won't be too bright on your eyes right when you're waking up out of the night. So I definitely keep that on there until 7 a.m. when I wake up in the morning. But let me know if any one of these 55 tips and tricks were helpful for you for the Humidity A11. And if it was, I make sure you show your support and appreciation by hitting the like button down below. But I really appreciate you guys for watching and supporting the channel. Also, leaving a comment and hitting the like button and also hitting the bell icon to get subscribed and notified for more videos. But I'm going to check you later. I'm going to get right back with you. I'm going to show up in the comment section right now. But do me a favor. If you haven't already, hit both the like and the subscribe button and I'll get right back with you later, group. Peace.